sports bikes or super nakeds? Which are faster on the racetrack? That's what we're here to find out. So let's meet today's contenders. Ducati's Street Fighter V4S. Under 200 kg, over 200 brake horsepower, aero package and high bars. It's the consummate class leading super naked. And it's gonna be up against this bike here. This is Ducati's Panigale V4S. And despite the added fairings and slightly different look, it's actually a very similar package. So the same engine, same frame, similar wheelbase, similar suspension, similar weight and similar output. So this is how the day's gonna work. We've got the same amount of track time for each of the machines. We're gonna kit them out on Pirelli's Super Corsa SC3 Slicks and see which one tops the timesheets. It's that simple. And to help me with this test, we brought in a fast lad that knows how to pedal a Panigale around the racetrack, DSB's Christian Iden. Christian, thank you for coming. You're going to be the fast guy that's putting in the times today. So I'm going to put it to you. These two bikes, which is going to be fastest? What kind of time do you think they're going to do? And how close do you reckon they're going to be? I reckon we're going to go for a two second time difference. Two seconds, okay. Yeah. yeah. Because basically it's the same bike. Yeah. Um, I think the riding position is going to make quite a difference. Yeah. But we're at Donington, you know, you've got the, the first Two thirds of the lap is all flowing. So obviously we've got the full fared version. I think that's gonna really have the upper hand. But the last sector, all through the loop bit, I can't see there being a great deal of difference. In fact, in the brake zones and in, in the hairpin, I think that having the, your hands up high and having that leverage from the straight bars might be might help. I guess we're gonna find out, but let's let's put a number on it. What kind of lap time do you think the <laughs> Panigale is gonna do around here then? In stock street four. So in full race trim at the at the weekend, I did a 28 flat. That's full super soft Pirellis. We're a little bit harder on them. Yeah. Um, but then stockers weren't too far off, so. Go 35s? 35s, okay. All right, I, I think you're going to do a 33. Whoa. <laughs> Just to put the pressure on. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> That's the day done. We've had a cracking time on these Ducatis at Donington Park. I guess the results have been as predicted. So I was the fastest <laughs> <laughs> runner up. You were far been, off. You've been graceful about it, haven't you? Yeah, I have to be graceful in defeat. I've got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the result is this, that the Panigale V4S was quicker. The V4S Street Fighter was a little bit slower. So I'm gonna let Christian reveal the results because this man obviously set the faster of the time. So starting with this bike, Christian, what did you clock? I did a 37 flat on that one. One minute 37. Yep. And I think your top speed at that point was 149. Yes, on this bike that. here. Yeah. Yep. Um, but that's an impressive time. I mean, for context. So yeah, you just had BSB here this mm -hmm. weekend. The fastest race lap was like a 127.6 or something yeah. like that. So you're within 10 seconds on a road bike with high bars and no fairing of the fastest lap of a BSB race. So fair play, not, uh, not too shabby. I guess the big question is to you, why could it not go faster? Yeah, so obviously today for one, we were on a track day. So yeah. it was a pretty busy one. It was a brilliant one, um, but yeah, not being able to get yourself up to speed is a bit of a funny one, especially on something that's quite different. So I've, it's a long time since I've ridden this sort of bike. Yeah. And actually, once you actually get used to it, the fact it feels a bit different, it rides pretty good. I think the main inhibiting factors for me was some of it was ground clearance. So yeah. I was struggling to some of the turns where you wanted to close the middle of the corner just because of your foot position and being a bit lower. It was kind of like you didn't dare lean it over a bit because your feet were getting in the way, the pegs were getting in the way, that sort of thing. Um, it had a little bit of a funny sensation, actually in the place where I thought it would be better was the smaller corners. Right. And it just had a bit of a weird sensation at tip in there, so I just didn't trust it fully in those places. Do you think that's the kind of thing that maybe, I mean, just again for context, 
uh, we went into the electronic suspension and basically cranked both bikes up as firm as they would go in the dynamic mode. But I was going to say, do you think that's the kind of thing that maybe with a bit more fettling, you could have dialed a bit of that out? 100%. I mean, we so we did like the probably the easy way to, to yeah. adjust the electronics, didn't we? We went into the like the the simple mode of doing it, but you can go into a much more advanced way of doing it. Where did you where did you find the bike was? the least supportive, like wet or the most challenging, I guess is another way of phrasing it. It was in those, in those tighter corners. Yeah. I think um, it's always going to be hard to feel the front when, you ha when your hands are higher up for one. So in the flowing stuff, yeah, you're not fully as committed, you know, into the, into the flowing stuff. So down crane and the left down crane and then the right of the old hairpin. You sort of, when your hands are a bit high, you don't have that same sensation of pushing down through the ground and it pushing back at you. Yeah. Just by the way, you don't get the sen that sensation through your body. So that's just natural. So yeah, you lose a bit of that rolling speed, but I was comfy on it. And actually I think that really helped. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah. The surprise actually was, given the fact that there's no screen on it, how little wind buffeting and how little the wind affected me. I thought that was gonna bother me because yeah. I don't ride a bike without a screen. And actually there seemed to be really good wind protection, which was kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, I, I quite enjoyed riding this bike because I guess, yeah, ov obviously it was the slow, it's the slower of the two options for me as well. But the, there's something completely different. There's a different challenge to trying to go quick on this versus that. And I found as well that, you know, as you've said, you know, the, the setup was a bit of an issue. But what I found with this bike was it was quite easy to disrupt it. So um, if you were really aggressive with the throttle pickup or something like that, you, you could kick off a bit of a weave, a bit of movement mm -hmm. that would just continue through and that might inhibit you, I don't know, with a gear change or something like that. It was, it was fun for that reason. And we were riding this around mostly with the, the wheelie control off, which made it even more fun. Like it's a great track day bike, surprising track day bike. And I've got to say as well, especially in your hands, but there was nothing else quicker out there, you know, in the whole field of sports bikes on track today, nothing went quicker than, than Christian on this bike. So do not discard this. A 37 around Donington Park is fast. But I like this bike because it was so playful, but I also hated it. I mean, for me, I was even going up an extra gear just to kind of smooth the initial pickup again. So I'd almost go coming out of um, Redgate in third and quickly working my way up to fifth mm -hmm. before the top of Craner. Whereas on the Panigale, I was kind of more in fourth yeah. and happy to, to rev it through. But yeah, so for me, this bike was a great, enjoyable ride. I think when it comes to lap time, it just can't deliver in the same way. Surprising thing for me though, was just how stable this bike was on the brakes. I like that about it. You could, I felt like I could almost brake harder on this than I maybe could on that. And I don't know, it's impossible, you know, when, without that, data to show exactly how much brake pressure is going through. It's just a sensation, isn't it? Where do you think, if you'd have dialed the setup in a bit more, how quick do you think you could have done on this? Do you know what, I think, one, it wasn't my motorbike and I didn't want to fall off it. Yeah. There's always that in the back <laughs> of your mind. But what was, what was actually kind of weird is I probably did a, like a second and a half off my best time within probably three laps. Okay. So I found it really easy to find, to get near to the speed I was going to go. I actually yeah. found it a really, so that means it's an easy bike to ride. Yeah. And actually I quite enjoyed it because, because it's different, it was almost the challenge of trying to ride something that's a bit different yeah. fast. And I actually enjoyed the fact I was on a track day with mainly, you know, this style of bike yeah, yeah. and being on something a bit different and sort of like weaving in and out of people and I quite enjoyed that and there is that sort of thing where people go on track days and you see different bikes they're on and I, it is quite cool that there is nothing wrong with that like you said to be within 10 seconds of the BSB lap record I'm not just talking an average lap I'm saying like that's, that's lap record yeah it was a little bit nervous for me at the top of Craner sort of as you tipped in it sort of had this really strange weave but again, I'll just put that down to the fact that your hands are up and in the, in the air and you're sort of in, in the wind yeah. and you're not getting that same, same sensation through the bars and you're not pushing down through the bars. But apart from that, I, I really enjoyed it. So what you're saying is if this bike had low bars and the fairing, you'd quite like it, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> So I guess moving on to the Panigale lap time, do you want to announce it? So this one I did a 34.5. 
The interesting thing was though, I don't know if you saw, the top speed registered wasn't hugely different to this. I think there were two miles per hour in it, which is surprising. It was surprising mm -hmm. to me because, well, it just goes to show you are getting out of corners well on this bike, you know, just as you are on that one there. That's, that's not huge, is it? No, there's, there's probably a few things in that. I think there's, some of it is actually in the electro electronics. Now, I raced here at the weekend. So for me, actually, maybe one of the reasons I enjoyed that more is because at least it felt completely different. Yeah. Whereas this one, I sort of know this is the base of my bike, more or less. It was frustrating because the electronics I felt were intrusive, but that's only because I've just come off a BSB race weekend. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the run onto the back straight, actually, because you were sort of sitting on the traction, there was only so fast you could sort of come onto that back straight. Yeah. So by the time you got it to actually stretch its legs, I don't think the, rip, the wind resistance thing was a, a massive Such play. A, yeah, yeah. So I think that was part of it. But yeah, it shows that you could get out the corner. But I do actually think if the, if the electronics were less intrusive, I could have got round the corner better and got out the corner better a lot more on this. And I think the big difference is, I think on this one, if I really started to get in a groove and push and push and push, the lap times would tumble. Whereas that one, I think I would get to a point where I'll be riding it not on feel, but on hope. Yeah, yeah, it should do this. It should do this, but and at one point it's sure. not gonna. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, actually don't know where the limit is on that. Yeah. But given that we got to a lap time quite quickly, I think it was somewhere not too far away from what we were doing. Yeah. Whereas this one, I think you could really start to go at it and keep going and push harder and harder. And the harder you push this, actually, the more it gave back. Whereas the harder I pushed that one, it tended to just lose a bit of line rather than it didn't give me more back, it almost gave me less back. Yeah. But I think that's just pretty much down to just how it is. It's basically the same bike. It's just how you sort of sit on it. It's the ergonomics of the bike. Yeah, and I mean, I rode that bike first, as I said earlier, to actually disrupt your flow. You know, hopping yeah. off a super bike onto a street fighter, you, you can't get anything much, well, you can't get much more different. I love the Panigales. I think they're cracking bikes, and I think that around this track here today, it just worked straight out of the box. Uh, nice engine, nice handling. Again, especially after we firmed it all up. But as you say, all the electronics weaned down, so we pretty much put the electronics on, on one in every mm -hmm. respect. Um, there's just too much going on. There's, there's too much holding you back. And you think that you're full throttle and something should be happening and maybe it doesn't. So it'd be really interesting. I mean, I guess if you had zero electronics on that bike, what kind of time do you think you could have done? I think it'd be nice to think that you could get down to a 32, maybe clip a 31. Which is mad, isn't it, on a street bike? Yeah, but yeah, the more, the more I pushed this one, the more it started to give me back. And actually the last session, I. We took the timers off. I probably did a 32 anyway. <laughs> uh, but no, you know, you know when you start to really play with a bike and enjoy it. And, yeah. and I've not ridden with electronics for so long. And yes, some of them got in my way. But once I started to understand it, I can fully understand how it's a great thing to have for 99.9% .9 of riders. And we've been on a Ducati only track day and watching a lot of the riders, how much belief they have in their electronics. It is pretty amazing how well they work. We've had a wide range of talent today, should yeah, we say? That's a good way of phrasing it. And um, nobody's afraid of getting on the throttle. And nobody today has had a big old wumtish no. through getting on the throttle. And everyone's leaving massive darkies that are just perfect. And it just shows how well set up these bikes are. Yeah. So yeah, as much as for me, it was a little bit, bit of a frustration, it's probably more so because I've come off a, a bike literally two days ago that has nothing holding me back. I guess just while we're on that topic, how close does that feel to your bike? I mean, you were talking earlier about the little details like foot position and stuff like that. I mean, how relatable is it to your BSB machine? I mean, when you sit on it, it does feel night and day different. Just sitting on a, an actual seat is being comfy is odd. You know, we, we sit <laughs> on a tiny piece, a five mil piece of foam that's just, it's there just for, just for show really. You know, it's not a seat. And these bikes are just so much more compliant but then when you, tr when you get to a, basically the superbike is horrendous to ride until you get within, you know, super close to the, the best time. Yeah. Whereas this bike, was, you can ride it at half speed or you can ride it as hard as you dare. And it felt nice, it felt plush, you know, running the curbs through Foggy's S's, it was just taking them so nice, you know, it never got unsettled. Of course it feels completely different, it looks completely different to my bike. But when you sit on it, you're about there. Yeah. There was a few things that, I would like to have changed, but that's just me. I would have put a set of rear sets on it because I'm a bit funny with my foot position and just 
trying to sneak gears there's a few places you go down craner and clicking back a gear into the old hairpin and then under starkeys and then up into mclean's trying to get that back shift up there it was just i just found that the the lever was a little bit near to me same with the rear brake it was just hard for me to utilize the rear brake when i wanted to but you know that's minor things and it's minor things that you're trying to do only on a track day yeah more or less i sat on it i felt comfy and it was pretty good yeah, well, it, it must have it must have been good for you to do that time. Uh, I know you're you're being very humble about it, but it was impressive, you know. And you know, a lot of people watching today came up and said exactly that, and I was impressed. Um, I I just kept seeing you vanish off into the distance. But it's been it's been an, an interesting test, as we said at the start. You know, it was almost a little bit predictable uh, in terms of I guess even in lap time mm -hmm. and you know, pecking order and all the rest of it. But even still, you know, until you get out there and do a test like this back to back, you just can't contemplate, A, how different these bikes are to ride, especially considering the common components between them both. Um, but, but B, yeah, I guess, I guess the, the time difference and how you find those times, um, you know, that's the telling of this. So it's been a cracking day, we've learned loads. As similar as these bikes are in terms of spec and components, they're completely different to ride. So technically speaking, the Panigale is the winner. But Christian, which bikes won in your book and why? I think the Street Fighters won. Because um, obviously it lost, but it lost by such a small margin yeah. that that's made it the overall winner. I think the way that, for me, that that would outride this on the road in terms of comfort, in terms of what I would want to, a road bike to be it was more than near enough that I would pick that one any day over this one. You're going for the underdog? I am, yeah. It, it, was, it was a great bike and I enjoyed it and I could play with it and I could be a fast guy in the fast group on it. What more could you want? Happy days. Well, I can't argue with that. <laughs> you don't, you're not good at finishing, are you? <laughs> I don't know how you've got two kids. 